So now we are going to look at a few properties of regular LDPC codes. So first, we would like to select the code parameters. And for this, we are using the threshold. So we saw previously that the threshold tells us essentially what values of DV and DC we should choose if the code rate, design code rate is fixed. And usually the design rate is given. So usually the design rate is given. Then if the design rate is given, we have DC, which is equal to DV divided by one minus the design rate. And we have seen before that in most cases, the verbal note degree of three is the best choice, in particular if you have a regular code. Some other channels, this is, may not be the case. This is true for the binary erasure channel. We have seen in a simulation example in the previous chapter that on the binary symmetric channel, there was one code where DC, DV equals four was essentially. We also saw that um, verbal note degree of two works okay. The threshold for verbal note degree of two, epsilon star, is one divided by DC minus one. It's okay, but these codes, they have some bad properties. So the main reason is that the minimum distance only grows with log of n. And in general, we would like to have a minimum distance that grows with n. We double the length of the code. We also double the fraction of errors that we want to correct. We always want to correct a fraction of errors that is constant. And we double the code length. We also want to double the number of errors that we the minimum distance only grows logarithmically with n, then we have the property that uh, when we double the length of the code, we cannot correct twice the amount of errors, but um, only uh, this only grows logarithmically. So this is to be avoided, especially if you want to have guarantees of correcting errors. So how can we Prove this, um, we can formulate the following theorem. And in fact, we can state an upper bound on the minimum distance. This upper bound on the minimum distance is given by this expression. And we can see there are some constants here and there, but the main thing is that this depends on log n. This is in the order of log n. So how can we prove this? Again, we make use of the graph representation of the code. So starting from the trellis diagram, so let's have a very simple code. So it's this code and let's color the variable nodes. Uh, yes, this is a green variable node and this is a blue variable node. This is check node C1, this is check node C2. We can draw a graph representation of this code. How can we do this? We start with the red variable node. The red variable node is connected to two check nodes, C1 and C2. C1 is connected also to two other variable nodes, namely the one and the green one. And C2 as well is connected to two other verbal nodes, namely the blue one and the green one. So this is the graph representation. And we see that a cycle can be represented with this graph very easily. This is a way to represent And we use this graph representation and count how many layers can we construct before we find a cycle. This is the main idea here. And with this main idea, we can hopefully correct then 
y arroz. So, we start with this representation and we use this graph representation of the code to prove this uh, theorem. So, we start with bit x1 of the code without loss of generality. This is what we did here. So this is bit x1 of the code, bit x1. And then we expand the graph of the code as a tree. And we have a variable load degree of two, just as in this example here. So um, x1 is connected to two check nodes, c1 and c2. And each of those check nodes is connected to dc minus one other variable nodes. And um, this is then in layer one, this is layer zero, this is layer one, or we also say peer one. So peer one means layer one. So one of those connections is connected to x1, and dc minus one connections are connected to the other variable nodes in peer one. And then we uh, expand this graph. So this is shown here. So we have x1, it's connected to two check nodes c1 and c2. These are connected to variable node to dc minus one other variable nodes. And these other variable nodes again are connected to a single check node. Because there is already one connection coming from c1 or c2. And then we have additional connections going to the next check node. And then we just count the number of variable nodes and the number of check nodes. So in tier one, we have two times, because we have two check nodes, times dc minus one variable nodes. So this is what we have in tier one. Then we go to tier two. So how many variable nodes do we have in tier two? Well, each of those two times dc minus one variable nodes is connected to one check node, one single check node. You see that there's one connection going down. And each of those um, variable nodes is connected to dc minus one new variable nodes via this single check node. So in tier two, it means we multiply this expression with dc minus one. So we have two times dc minus one squared variable nodes. Then we continue. So in tier m, we have two power two times dc minus one variable nodes. So we continue to do this until we find a cycle. So we do this up to this point where we start finding a cycle. So we expand this graph until we form a loop. And uh, we do this when the loop goes, the loop is formed from the variable nodes that start in tier M. So in tier M, we have no cycle yet. The cycle starts after tier M. And because we don't have a cycle, what that means is that all the variable nodes that we have visited so far, they must be distinct. If we start visiting a check node that has already been visited, this means we make a cycle. There is going to be a cycle. If there is no cycle, it means all the variable nodes must be distinct. How many variable nodes do we have in total? We have in total n variable nodes. So it means that two times dc minus one power m must be smaller or equal than n. And we can rearrange this expression and solve this for m. And we have m must be smaller or equal than ln n over two divided by ln dc minus one. So it's just applying the logarithm on both sides or dividing by two and then applying the logarithm on both sides. Okay, so now we form a cycle. So in tier M, we have every variable that is distinct and then we connect the variable nodes to make a cycle. That's shown next. And we look at the worst case. So here we have tier M. There is no cycle yet. And then the variable nodes going out of tier M 
they connect to check notes and they connect um, to another variable node forming a cycle. They could also, an, an alternative is that they could connect to the same check node forming a cycle as well. Um, but this is a case that we don't look at because the worst case scenario is when they connect to a variable node via a check node. So here in this example, m is equal to 2. All the variable nodes are different and here m equals 2. And then we make a cycle. So now what we do is the following. We give all the variable nodes a value and we give all the variable nodes a value of zero except the ones in the cycle. We take those the variable nodes that are inside the cycle and we give them value of one. This is a black node. So um, those in the loop, they are being equal to one. So here we have one, 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 one. And all the other variable nodes are equal to zero. So now what happens? We see that every check node is exactly two connected ones and all the other connected values are equal to zero. So the parity check equation is fulfilled. So here we have a fulfilled parity check equation. Here we have a fulfilled parity check equation. Here we have a fulfilled parity check equation. Here we have fulfilled. Here we are fulfilled. Here we are fulfilled and so on. So we have constructed a code word. This is a code word because all the parity checks are fulfilled. So now we count the weight of this code word, and that is an upper bound on the minimum distance because the minimum distance is the weight of the small the code word at smallest weight of all code words. So we have constructed one code word. The weight of this is an upper bound to the minimum distance. Possibly there is another code word with a smaller weight, but this is then more difficult to find. So now we just count the number of variable nodes. So here it's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So essentially it's two M, so the number of, number of variable nodes in the tier. So we have two tiers times two, and then plus the first and the last variable node. So the number of variable nodes that are in the loop is upper bounded, small or equal, than 2m plus 2. Why upper bounded? We could also have 2m plus 1. That's the case when those guys are connected to a common check node. This one will also be fulfilled because the weight or the two connections are equal to 1, but um, that is not the worst case. So therefore we have an upper bound here as well. So we can say that the upper bound on the minimum distance is 2m plus 2, and we know an upper bound on m. The upper bound on m is 2 times log n divided by logarithm of c minus 1. So variable node degree dv is equal to 2. Then we have this result that the minimum distance is upper bounded by an expression that depends on the logarithm of n, which is bad because we cannot increase the length of the code and increase the number of correctable errors similarly. And this completes the proof of this nice little theorem. So you can see that the graph representation is a very powerful tool to um, prove properties of the code. Okay, with this, we have concluded our look at some properties of regular LEPC codes. And next video, we're going to look at exit charts.